All right. Welcome, everybody. Hope you had a nice lunch, got yourself all nourished and ready, got some energy for this afternoon. Um, my name is Susan Bernard, and today we are in the session Simplify Your Management of Windows, Mac OS, iOS, TVOS, Android, and Chrome devices with FileWay. I'm here to introduce Stephen and John, and I'll turn it on over. All right, thank you. Yeah, pleasure to be here. I cannot wait uh, already till next year when we can get back on site with everybody. Uh, but we're definitely making do and uh, appreciate the time we have here today. Uh, so why I do this, let me share my screen and I'll, uh, I'll talk about a couple other things. Let's do this. All right, uh, John, can you do a quick check for me? Can you see the screen? Uh, yes, sir. I can see your screen. Okay, there you go. All right, so uh, uh, so today's presentation we're going to do in two uh, portions. I'm going to take you through a, a just an introduction to FileWave. If this is maybe your first time uh, checking us out, as we have been around for a long time, uh, but then on my counterpart here, John Brigham, who is your dedicated engineer for the state, he's going to take you through the tool set uh, so you get a good idea of what you as an IT administrator would experience overall. Of course, today's demonstration. Uh, will be a little bit of a high level introduction to FileWave and we always encourage you to hopefully uh, you know invite us uh, to back to do a little bit more of a deep dive so a lot of information today please share your comments or questions in the chat and we'll try to answer them uh, throughout uh, each, each portion so for introductions as I just mentioned uh, my name is Stephen Morante I've been at FileWave for just under 10 years uh, I have covered different different portions of the country th throughout that time and again, John Brigham, your dedicated engineer, as well as Callie Wagasback, uh, she works the territory as well, handling a lot of our strategic partners, which we'll, we'll make mention of that here in just a minute. All right, so first, I always like to kind of bring everyone's mindset around MDM, right? Because that, the, the, those three letters, uh, this is where people's minds go, right? They're thinking, let's manage those Apple devices. But here at FileWave, we want to go beyond that. And we want to bring your attention to a true unified endpoint management opportunity. That is what we strive for. So within FileWave, as you'll see today, you can manage all your Windows, all your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone, your Apple TVs, your Android, even in that extended visibility to those Chromebooks. Uh, so again, all inclusive, one central place to go to just fully take control of your environment is our goal here. Now, again, if this is your uh, first time maybe checking us out, uh, we have been around for an awfully long time. Uh, we're approaching 30 years, so very exciting times. Um, we are worldwide, but more importantly for you guys, our headquarters are in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, and so that is where our support originates from uh, for the majority of your day. After about 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, you'll get over to our Los Angeles-based team. So all in all, you're taken care of right here at home, uh, but we love our counterparts across the globe as well. Now, uh, about 90% of our customer base here in the U.S. is education. So as a lot of different platforms that are out there, they you know, cater to uh, education and enterprise and things like that, as we do, we truly love our schools, no matter your size, whether it's 100 devices or 100,000 plus, uh, we can definitely fit in and help you kind of take better control, get some time back uh, in creating some efficiencies. But we can uh, definitely introduce you to some of your local peers if you'd like. And uh, you know, let them talk to you about how FileWave has made their installations better. Uh, I, I did mention quickly, just a quick shout out to a lot of our strategic partners out there, uh, especially over these last several months, they've equally been crucial to providing what you need to ensure virtual learning, you know, that hybrid situation can take place. I know there's still a lot of hardware out there ready to be delivered. Uh, so we always wanna you know, kindly share this. But also uh, over on the far right hand side, you can see some of our strategic integration partners. So this is also really cool because you know, some of those logos may look familiar and, and we'll talk about our API here, but this is how we can integrate with these different tool sets to bring all of that information to one central place. We can inject into their tools, they can pull into ours, depending on what you'd like to do and where you'd like to see it. Now, kind of diving into the first uh, um, important aspect of FileWave here, we want to just kind of bring up those top five challenges that we're still helping schools tackle today. Number one, as you can imagine, just needing to connect to all the devices, no matter their location, right? They're going out there. Uh, we need to make sure that we can uh, execute whatever we need to when they're out there. Number two, needing to now manage a growing and mixed operating system environment 
So you may have been Windows heavy before or Apple heavy, getting a lot of Chrome or whatever mix up there may be, all in all creating some potential complexities of you know handling all these different devices now. Needing to be able to track the assets. So that again has been huge, right? Just being able to locate the devices on a map, maybe a group or a cluster of devices, making sure that they're where they need to be. Fawe is definitely giving you one of those as well. Number four, staff is unfortunately still spending too much time potentially based on the tools they have available. And we wanna give you again, that one centralized platform to quickly detect and remediate those off network issues, especially. Number five, of course, the ultimate goal, there's just too many management tools out there. And so again, the main takeaway we want you to see here is that you can live within the FileWave tool to do the majority of what you need to do and execute on those machines. Now I show this very openly. Right, and this isn't a, a target at any one of our players. As I mentioned, I've been here just under 10 years. I have the utmost respect for every platform that we, that we go against or play against, right? We're all equally important. But the reason I show this is because this is what we see in a lot of uh, school districts, right? There's Windows tools, there's Apple tools, there's Google Plus tools, there's Android asset management galore. Right, it's just a lot. And sometimes there's that many, if not more, maybe you have something for just patch management or just remote desktop or just to deploy software. We wanna condense that and bring that all into one to file wave, give you that one tool to rule them all. Now, how do we do that? So again, kind of high level here before we dive right into the product uh, and kind of starting, uh, you're bringing your attention to the top left there. We always have initial discussions within a life cycle view, right? So as you can see, FileWave will provide you the ability to image or provision those devices, getting them ready to go out there in the wild. But once they're out there, that's where the fun start, uh, fun stuff should happen, right? With FileWave, you're able to deploy any type of software, applications, scripts, documents, you name it. If it's deployable, FileWave can do it. We can also do it no matter where the devices are, the commands can also be sent even if the devices aren't initially on or even stay on, which I'll make a comment about that towards the end. All right, so you're a complete deployment engine after that initial image of whatever you need to do. Or better yet, you can actually use FileWave to automate that deployment process with our self-service kiosk. This does work on the Windows, the Mac, the iPad, and Android side. So now you can give that kiosk or self-service portal feel to your end users. Long gone are the days that we just have to continue to throw things out over the network. You can just restage it in that end user portal. You've permissioned it to be there. Let the end user go initiate that install when they're available. Patch management, very crucial as always. We are directly tied into Microsoft and Apple. So we're bringing you all of those patches centrally. So again, Windows, Mac, iPad, even those uh, big Sur updates, we've got those uh, taken care of as well. Now, remote desktop, again, another important IT management functionality. Windows to Mac, Mac to Windows, doesn't matter with FileWave. It also doesn't matter what network you may be sitting on, nor the device that you're trying to take control of. Uh, our remote desktop is full control, all right? So full desk or a keyboard, uh, mice control. You can actually take over or you can work alongside the end users. So pretty flexible there. I will make a quick a little a teaser note here. Um, again, you'll learn from the FileWave team is that we're always very transparent uh, in, in kind of the roadmap speakings. Um, we can make it official though that uh, later this year, we will be releasing screencasting for Chrome and iPad. So not necessarily that full control of those devices, but still giving you the ability to go in and see the screen and work alongside that end user on these other devices. And I believe there is potential we'll be rolling that out to Android as well. So very excited to kind of see that uh, ad addition to our, our remote desktop piece. Device tracking, as I kind of mentioned before, a pretty hot topic still today. Uh, we give you complete GPS location tracking ability across all the devices, doesn't matter. Just being able to track a single device or a group of devices, bringing it up on that map, getting its latitude, longitude, IP address, running reports on users' log history, uh, we can give that to you as well. Now, the other side of FileWave is all about inventory, asset management. So we are one of the few that allows you to actually have a device discovery scan, which basically allows you to scan your subnets and see what is truly out there on your networks. 
And the first thing to note there is that this goes beyond what you may be actually managing with FileWave. If you send a scan out and it brings back your smart boards, your access points, your printers, your smart thermostats, if you've got them, you can use FileWave's inventory system to log it all, right? Organize it, group it. Uh, it doesn't cost a license or anything like that. We want our asset management tool to go beyond what is again being managed. So we'll definitely drill down into the asset management part as well a little further. Now, license management, of course, that so FileWave is a full MDM. Uh, so we'll kind of start on that side. So if you've got a current MDM working with Apple School Manager uh, or in the VPP process, we're going to feel right at home here at FileWave with, with license management. We're going to auto sync all of those purchases. But again, going beyond just the Apple side, any licensed content that the district is purchasing, you can upload right into FileWave and say, hey, we purchased 100 or 10,000 copies of whatever said software, FileWave, monitor this for me. Tell me when I'm X number of licenses out of compliance. Better yet, show me who has it, right? Coming here at the end of the year, maybe you've deployed content throughout, and now we need to kind of rein that back in. Where are all my copies of Creative Suite or Office or whatever applications that are costly? You can find them, determine if they are still necessary, and uninstall them and install them to new devices. For the software usage part, uh, we actually can drill down and show you how often uh, software has been launched and how long it's been run. So again, if you have administrators trying to get a good idea or sense of, are, are we getting our worth out of it? Or it, maybe it's a subscription uh, software. Maybe we're not gonna renew it because over the last six months, you've opened it four times and let it run for under an hour. That's kind of a problem. So just giving you that information is uh, just another piece to follow it. Now these last two are pretty fun. So these are kind of the game changers of FileWave, right? Because we go beyond just that normal, hey, I'm gonna deploy some software today and cross my fingers and hope it works. So number one with our ability to self-heal is our ability to deploy software and say, hey, FileWave, I want this to work every day the same way. All right, so you deploy software, multi-gig programs, or again, a simple document. It's set to self-heal. If an end user accidentally or maliciously breaks it or a virus corrupts it, by default, every 24 hours, FileWave will do an actual file by file check of that application and make sure it's all ready to go for that day. But in the middle of the day, right, when all the problems seem to happen, you get that frantic call, hey, uh, Office won't open today. All right, cool. Instead of you having to deploy it all over again or potentially re-image, you can actually prompt that user to just reboot their machine Upon reboot, FileWave will do that same file by file check and put those files right back to the way they should have been, whether they again were missing, deleted or corrupt. All right. So I, you've maybe heard me say it a couple times, file by file check. So that brings in the first attention to our file set delivery system. All right. So there are other programs out there that they can fix programs, but to do so, they have to reinstall it all over again. So that's why I make mention to larger programs such as Office and Creative Suite. If a 20 plus gig program breaks and it was only a 100 meg executable file, I don't wanna have to deploy 20 megs again. And that's where FileWave takes it that uh, all the way to the distance, right? We only will have to reinstall that 100 meg file because it was set to self heal. Everything else is already working. And we just leave it alone. The next is our ability to no longer worry about did our deployments get there? Did they stay online when it was halfway through? All those interruptions that occur, especially when these devices are no longer staying in one place, right? So now with FileWave, you can deploy your software right now. The devices don't have to be on. We'll wait for that machine to come online. We'll begin that installation in the background. But now the important part is, is that if the user shuts that laptop down uh, or they lose Wi-Fi connectivity or, or power, FileWave will get literally pause, wait for that machine to come back online. It can be on a totally different network and it'll pick up right where it left off. Uh, long gone are the days there too that you guys have to do uh, potential uh, checks to say, all right, who canceled it out? Uh, now we got to restart it over again. So we have that built-in redundancy for you. And kind of closing this one out with that API there at the top in the last column, this is our way to tie into your other systems more than what we just showed you today. Uh, but we can now tie in if you want to collect different attributes from FileWave into that system, that other system, or vice versa. We can do that uh, along the way. 
Now, the next thing I want to touch on before we kind of get into the technical side of today is uh, the infrastructure of FileWave. What does that look like? How quickly can I get it up and running, right? Uh, so the FileWave server, for starters, can exist in three different iterations. You can uh, virtualize it if you like your on-premise control using our pre-packaged, pre-configured VMs using VMware, Hyper-V, Linux-based. You can throw it on a Mac Mini um, if you'd like to. A one Mac Mini, to be honest, can actually uh, cover about five to 7,000 devices just with one. Uh, so pretty strong there. Or if you don't want to worry about all that uh, uh, server madness, you can just utilize our FileWave cloud. All in all, uh, we, we've got you covered there. Next, I want to bring your attention to those three circles there in the middle. Those are what we call boosters here at FileWave. Uh, for those Apple users, they can relate to those caching servers there at Apple. Um, and the boosters have been with us forever. Number one about boosters is that these aren't server spec uh, pieces of hardware. They can be a base, uh, you know, an old tower, Windows machine sitting in a closet. As long as it's got a base operating system, decent sized hard drive, that's a booster. You can have as many as you want, all right? The benefit of having these boosters, again, especially if you've got multiple buildings, you can stage these boosters to be assigned to different sites. So now when you need to do a deployment of a document or a multi-gig program, that booster is gonna do all of that work for you and leaving the rest of the wide area network traffic to a bare minimum, right? You wanna do it locally. Let the booster do it there to those devices uh, at that site. You can also throttle your deployments, right? If you're doing a big deployment, right? You don't want, you don't have time to maybe schedule it in, in uh, nice hours. Uh, so you can actually throttle how fast or slow that is delivered. The other big benefit about the booster is that this is where our IVS, our imaging virtual server can reside. Now you get the feel for more site-based imaging for those Windows devices. So a lot of different purposes available for these boosters. All in all, they're just here to allow you to scale freely, make sure that you're able to get your content out there, not having to bog down networks. We love our, our, our lightweight uh, layout here at FileWave. And again, we can definitely talk uh, a whole lot more about that. All right, so I'm gonna save, I'm gonna, you're gonna see me switch this here, but I'll save that for the very end. Uh, and let me get over to this, bring this up here. And I will unshare my screen. I will hand it over to John and we'll dive into the program a little deeper. And like I said, if you've got questions, I will go ahead and answer those as we continue. John, all you. Buddy. All right. Just one second and my screen should be coming through one second. Oh, One second. Sorry about that. Hey, do, you, do you want to entertain a couple of questions, Stephen, while John? Um, yeah. Are, are there? I was going to say he's going to jump back in. Um, I, I checked the Q and A if they are if there are any questions. Um, we don't have anything just yet, but I wonder if some folks would want to um, raise their hand and just ask your question. Their question that's on their mind right now while we're waiting for John to pop back in. It might be nice, kind of like if we we're in person, take some hand raising. You can yeah. even just put it in the chat if you really don't want to go on stage. You can also just not turn your camera on, but you could also go on stage. But it might be helpful to get some perspective from folks sitting there in the audience and see where you're at. Do I have any takers? I probably could throw some chips your way also. Looking for a hand raise. God, I can. I, I do have my server up. <laughs> there he is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. It looks right. like we had someone requesting to hide the sharing dialogue too once you do get that shared back up again. All right. 
go ahead. Yeah, we saw your screen there for a moment. All right, is hi. All right, there we go. So uh, thank you, Stephen, for queuing it up that way. Uh, so I won't waste any more time today. This is our FileWave admin tool. When you first log in, it'll take you to your dashboard, which is really just your overview and performance. So here within FileWave, we do like to use a stoplight color scheme. That way it's very easily point outable uh, that you need to take action, right? So green means you're good. Yellow means, um, hey, you may need to investigate. And then red means you definitely need to take uh to investigate, right? So we definitely did all these on purpose. <laughs> the sync status, these will go from green directly to red if anything happens there. And you also have the ability to set up alerts in case any of these settings do go from green to yellow or red, all right? Uh, we do have our server performances. So uh, here it'll let you know your uh, drive space, CPU and RAM, your distribution of clients, any queued mail, Classroom, so that's going to be for Apple Classroom. Boosters, which Stephen did a really great job of describing, but we'll go uh, deeper into that once we get there on the left-hand side. Server licenses down here below, letting you know how many licenses you have remaining. And then finally, uh, we do have an unlimited support model, so you can actually sum, uh, submit tickets, share your screen, and submit logs directly from the FileWave admin tool. All right. Next down, we'll go over to clients, and for the rest of the presentation, we'll just utilize this left side panel. So for clients, we do have two different groups. We do have static groups, all right, so right there. And then we also have dynamic groups. So with our dynamic groups, you can actually base them off of uh, inventory queries if you like, all right? So here we'll double click on this Windows smart group there and actually show you what we base that group on, all right? Now, as I said, you can go and make this very granular and make that smart group uh, an inventory query. All right, we'll go ahead and close this out. Now, bringing in the devices in the file wave. Uh, for, we'll start with the easiest, and then we'll get a little bit more complicated, right? So the easiest ones, obviously, is going to be Chrome. So with Chrome, it's going to be more of a syncing process with, with your Google Admin Console. All right, so with that, once you go ahead and sync with your Google Admin Console, you will bring in all of your OU structures, all right? Now, directly from FileWave, we can actually add a new OU structure. We can rename one. We can set permissions. So if you uh, maybe you don't want someone messing with a certain grade level, you can change that permission there. Now, again, once you have your OU structures ready, you can actually move devices within OU structures directly from FileWave. And in less than two minutes, you will see that change occur. All right. So we'll flip that back. The added bonus on Chromebooks is you can actually disable a Chromebook directly here from FileWave. Uh, you can track those devices. So uh, it'll be every 15 minutes dropping its location normally. And if it's missing, it'll drop its location immediately and then update it every two minutes. All right. So uh, before we move on to the other OUs, let's go ahead and talk about Chromebooks, everything that you can do. All right. So we'll double click to show you the client info. And what you'll notice is that the client info window will look the same for all of the OSs. The only difference is the icon will change. And there may be more or less columns. Okay? So you will see your device details being reported from the device. And you can even add in custom fields as well. Like here we added in a device co uh, condition custom field. And just to show you some examples of the type of custom fields you can add in, there you go. Uh, Chromebook data, so the data letting you know that it's up to date. A historic list of users, so not just your current logged in user. And then finally, a position map, right? So what we like to say here at FileWave is we can't tell you the locker number, but we can tell you the building that it's in. So with that, it'll let you know the last time it was seen and then the accuracy, all right? And then finally, under tools for the Chromebooks, you do have the ability to go ahead and deprovision those Chromebooks directly from FileWave. And again, whatever you do here in the FileWave admin tool will be reflected in your Google Admin Console in less than two minutes. All right, now before we close up on Chrome, there's one more feature I would like to show. So here you see our Windows groups there. I will select a uh, Windows device, show location. Now this is going to pull both those devices on a single map, right? So this is you being able to track uh, different all the different OS types 
on one same map. And if you ever look at your map and you see one device is in Nebraska and the others in Texas, you probably got a problem, right? <laughs> okay, so go ahead and close that out. All right, now again, talking about how we bring these devices in. Windows, it is a simple MSI, okay? So with that, we will help you create a custom MSI, uh, basically letting you know, uh, letting the clients know what server to point to. So with that, you can push it out through uh, any third party tool that can deploy an MSI or GPO. All right. Now, double clicking into a Chrome or into a Windows device. Again, as you can see, it's going to be the same window. However, now we have file set status. File sets within File Wave are our software payloads. Okay. So here we're letting, we're letting you know all of the file sets that are um, associated to that device. So we will let you know if it's available in the kiosk, which is our self-service app store, if it has been successfully associated to the device, or for some reason, it cannot be associated to the device. In this instance, because these are two uh, Apple applications trying to be associated to Windows. Device details, again, very similar. The added bonus on Windows and Mac devices is that you can actually write a bash script for encryption status, which will uh, let you know the status coming from BitLocker and FileVault, respectively. All right. Uh, users, a historic list of users, policies, any policies placed on that device, and then again, the position map, but zoomed in specifically to that Windows. Now, again, on Windows and Mac, you do have the ability to observe client. Now, that is NAT reversible, all right? Also, it does not matter if you're on a Windows device trying to look at a Mac or a Mac trying to look at a Windows. And then finally, another thing to uh, be privy to with the observed client is uh, the device, the end user's device does not necessarily need to be sitting in the same building right next to you. As long as the end user's device has that file wave client and is attached to the internet or and connected to the internet, your device has a FileWave admin tool and is connected to the internet. And then finally, your FileWave server, which if you heard this before, you know where I'm going, is connected to the internet. You will be able to uh, initiate that remote session. And as Steven said earlier, it is a full remote session, not just observed client. So we'll probably change that here. <laughs> remote wipe, all right? Now with remote wipe, this is very aggressive here on these Windows devices. So let's say this device is uh, lost or stolen. You know it's gone because your device is in Texas. So you say, all right, let's go ahead and wipe that device. Well, if uh, that person who's in Texas sees that device is being wiped, they may try to turn the computer off. Well, again, as Stephen alluded to, uh, when that machine comes back on, FileWave will continue with that wipe all the way down to the blue screen of death. All right, so I'm always very careful not to touch that button there. Okay, uh, Android. We can also work on Android devices as well. With Android devices, uh, we do support EMM enrollment and then also the new ZTE enrollment. And what you'll notice again, it's gonna look the exact same, your file set status. Uh, here we don't have any file sets current because this is a new enrollment. Device details, install policies, position map, and then the ability to wipe that device. So that's gonna be for Android. And now finally, with our Apple devices, if you all are utilizing DEP, we can connect to your Apple School Manager and DEP, and that way we'll bring in the devices that have been assigned to FileWave via their serial number. Okay, so once the devices are in here, now you'll go ahead and create a profile. So here under the profile, you can put the support information in case it's lost or stolen. Under options, you have the ability to supervise the device, and we always make sure that is MDM removable is not checked. That way the end users cannot remove that DEP profile. All right, uh, shared iPads, you can enable it there. And then also you can say how many users you would like for that shared iPad. Setup assistant, we like to encourage that you select none and only select location services, but that's only so that DEP process can move a little bit faster. Obviously you can select whatever uh, settings you like and go from there. Account, now this is gonna be more aimed at those Mac devices. You do have the ability to set a primary account here. And you can also create a backdoor admin account as well, All right? Do support anchor certs and supervising certs, device naming. So for new devices, uh, re-enroll with the same off user and re-enroll with new off user, 
we have these different naming policies. And then also down here below, we do have just a standard naming template, all right? So you can, uh, as long as it's be between the percentage signs, you can use any inventory, custom, or LDAP attribute, right? And then last but not least, activation lock settings. So uh, with the activation lock, if you uh, use Apple devices and you ever ran into that issue, you know it can be sort of a headache. Not talking about Apple, but you just know having to call someone and ask them to help you, it can be a little bit of a hassle, right? So with that, we do allow you the ability to disable that completely, lock it down to an iCloud account, or lock it down to an Apple School Manager account, all right? Now, the ultimate failsafe within FileWave is the ability to allow activation lock only if the bypass code is available. So with that, FileWave will store that bypass code in our encrypted database, and there you go, those uh, bypass codes. So again, that is that ultimate failsafe just to save you some time so you don't have to call Apple. All right, we'll go ahead and close that out. Go back to the DEP association window. So now you have your profile created. You have the devices you want to target. So now you literally just drag and drop and it'll make the association down below or you can actually edit the assignment rules. So all the devices that are coming in are gonna get this one uh, profile. And then you just synchronize. That way it can synchronize with Apple School Manager and kick off that DEP process. Uh, if it's a bare metal device or brand new, you can just go ahead and boot it up. And then obviously if it needs to be wiped, once you wipe it and it uh, goes through, it will start that DEP process for you. All right, go ahead and close it out. And what you'll notice again, and I'll go ahead and double click on a Mac device here, file set status, let you know if it's been associated or not device details, again, with that encryption status as well, command history, managed applications, so the ones that you put on the device, installed applications, the one that they install, installed profiles, users, historic list of users, policies, position map, and then finally, the ability to observe client and remote wipe as well. All right, go ahead and close that down. And similarly, on an iPad, stop me if you've seen this before, file set status, device details, command history, managed applications, installed applications, managed docs, installed profiles, position map, and the ability to remote wipe those iOS devices. All right. Now that we know how we can bring in the clients, how do we bring in software? So with FileWave, there is no file size or file type restriction. Go ahead and click new desktop file set. These are the, um, the several different ways you can bring in desktop file sets. So you have a .app or a .folder, uh, empty. These are utilized for scripting purposes. So I'll just go ahead and make one very quickly so we can see the different ways that we can script within FileWave, all right? So you can just uh, attach a script to an empty file set and let that be what you deploy to the machine, or you can actually attach a script to an application, right? So if it's like a Windows application that needs to be activated, you can attach an activation script directly to the application by selecting that application, all right? Uh, but you have requirement scripts, pre-flight, activation, post-flight, verification, pre-uninstall, and post-uninstall, all right? Going back, you have the ability to import a uh, file set. Software updates within FileWave. The way that it works is once you have devices within FileWave, they will request their updates. The reason why we do it that way is because we are connected to the online catalogs for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, tvOS, and the new Mac OS MDM. So if we go ahead and unselect this box, it'll go from about 90 to almost 17,000. And trying to find the update that you need here is like a needle in a haystack, especially since this one is from 2012. That's just terrible. <laughs> All right. So here are the updates that you need. Here's the computer that needs the association. You see it when you or that needs the update. You see it when you click on the update. So now you have the ability to create that file set there. And it is actually go ahead and importing itself directly in the file wave so you can uh, already associate it to the devices. All right, 
Here, you can actually associate it to one or two devices to make sure that nothing goofy is going on with that update. We want to make sure that you know you don't push out an update that's going to break everything, right? So test it out on one or two machines. Then after that, you can approve it, and now you can automatically deploy it to any future requesting clients. All right. So that is software updates within FileWave. Keep going. We do have profile. So our profile editor, we do have access to the legacy and even some of the more current settings as well. So we'll tell you the uh, version that the OS needs to be on for those settings to work. Now here within the profile editor, if you need a, a, a setting, you can easily just search for it. So here, defer. All right. I'm going to click on iOS restrictions and just show you some of the restrictions that you have. So here, it'll let you know if the device needs to be supervised or not. And again, these are just some that you have over the uh, functionality. But all the way to the bottom, what I searched for, defer software updates for up to 90 days. All right. So as you can see, I searched for that, and it pulled up everywhere that defer came up. So you can actually defer software updates for iOS devices, Mac OS, and also your tvOS devices. All right. You have restrictions over your application, so you do have the ability to black and white list specific applications. And then also media content there. An added bonus for your iOS devices. Again, the ability to search, your web content filter, and you can go ahead and black and whitelist specific URLs as well. All right. So that's how you create your profile. Uh, the App Store. Now, we can go ahead and uh, connect that VPP token directly into FileWave so we can actually synchronize all your purchases from Apple School Manager. You don't necessarily need to buy them one off from the App Store. Uh, however, if you want to, you can. All right. Uh, MSI, PKG, also EXE files, we can upload those into FileWave as well. FileSet Magic is going to capture a customized software installation at the file level. So with that, it's going to take, basically, it's going to take a snapshot before and after and then make a file set of the difference. All right, so that's how it captures that customized software installation, and it can even capture registry key changes. All right, and then finally, policy, so the ability to put policy on those file wave clients. All right, we'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, and then for your mobile file sets, again, you're going to see your app store, those enterprise apps. The profile is going to be the same as if you click it on the new desktop file set. And then you'll see for your Android, you do have the ability to do Play Store applications, enterprise, and then policy as well. All right, now these are going to be specific for those Android devices. So now that we know how we bring software in the FileWave, how do we deploy it? All right, or excuse me, I took a step too fast. I want to touch on our self healing. Okay, so here under Windows, we'll go to our applications and we'll select this application, File Locator Lite 3. As you can see, it's about 30 megabytes. So we'll go ahead and double click on that application, which will then bring up its file set contents. All right. So from there, you can actually see where that application sits on the device. You can import a file or a folder. You can create a new folder if you want to change where anything sits here. You can get info. All right. Now, getting info will show you the permissions, ACLs, verification. Now, again, that's self healing. All right. So as Steven said, this uh, entire application was about 30 megabytes. This registry uh, file here is only 69 kilobytes. If this uh, file is corrupted, deleted, removed, whatever, every 24 hours, FileWave is going to basically do a once over over your machines and make sure that everything is, is, is good there, right? If they notice that something is off and it's set to self-healing, it will just re-download that deleted, corrupted, removed file versus the entire application. So it's going to save you some time, and it'll fix it before your end users even know it's broken. All right. So just finishing down the file set contents, you can edit registry key directly from here. If it is a text file, you can edit that text file. You can export files, delete them, and then take control. So that's just if you're working in FileWave at the same time as another administrator, they're not working over you. All right. All right, so how are we bring the app uh, software into FileWave? Now, how do we deploy it? Associations. Associations within FileWave, uh, it's very easy. 
you can go group to group or you can go individual to individual. So what I mean by that here, again, I'm gonna use these uh, windows as an example. I'm gonna grab this windows group, drag it over the platform, and then I can drop it directly there on the windows device. Or I can say, well, I think I got most of them, so I'll just drop it on the badgers. All right. So I've made a uh, standard association. That means in FileWave, if I go ahead and update model, which is how you commit a change, so it's like that save button within FileWave, it'll be ready for immediate deployment once that device checks into the server, okay? If you need to control the timing of it, we're gonna go ahead and double click, and now you can see, hey, I can start downloads at a certain time. I can make those files active or inactive at a certain time. I can delete files if I need to. And then finally, if you're tired of of telling everyone, please, please, please go ahead and, and update. You can just set a, a reboot deadline. So now you guys have until Friday at three o'clock. All right, now last but not least, you do have the ability to create a kiosk association. With this kiosk association, you go ahead and hit okay. Again, you still wanna go ahead and make a uh, update model to make that change happen. But once you make a kiosk association, on Windows and Mac devices, uh, Windows will be in the toolbar, and then Mac it'll be in. Or excuse me, Windows will be in the task tray, and in Mac it'll be in the toolbar. For Android and iOS, we actually have an app portal. So with that, your end users will have a little fileway flag that they can click on, and then go and select install software. All right. Now everything we do here at FileWave is done at the root level, and so because of that you are already putting your admin signature on everything you make available here within the FileWave kiosk, all right? Now you can customize it, so it doesn't have to say FileWave, it doesn't have to have our flag. And my colleague actually created a dark mode, so that actually looks really awesome. Uh, but with that, again, you've already put your admin signature, so any applications, media, profiles, you name it, your students will be able to install and uninstall that software as they please, right? So uh, give them a sense of control even though you're telling them what they can have. All right, we'll close that out. And next we'll go down to imaging. All right, so imaging within FileWave, we're gonna support Pixie Boot, and that doesn't matter whether it's legacy or UEFI BIOS. So the way that uh, imaging works here at FileWave, we always recommend a traditional thin disk image approach. And the reason for that is because FileWave wants to be your deployment engine. All right, so what we mean by thin image approach just that core uh, build of Windows with the FileWave client. From there, we will then sysprep the device. And during the process, right before we sysprep, we can actually create an answer file uh, where if you would like, you can join your domain directly from there. But again, we'll sysprep that device. We use this master image here as a uh, dummy placeholder. So whenever that machine does go ahead and do the sysprep and check back into FileWave, we will capture that image and it will be uploaded here, all right? So again, with FileWave, we like to capture one thin golden image that you can then associate to whichever devices you want. So here, if I wanted to grab this and associate it to the uh, Windows group there, it'll let me know, hey, all 16 of these devices are about to be imaged, and you can confirm that there. And I'll just do it, and I'll delete it later, all right? Okay, now again, the reason why FileWave says we wanna be your deployment engine is because post image, you can inject the drivers. And then finally, we'll take a step back to associations because you can see you can then associate any application scripts and software you want directly to the application, right? So that is why FileWave always encourages that thin image, inject the drivers post image, and then deploy whatever you want to the machines from your associations. Obviously, you can capture whatever size image you want to, but timing, right? <laughs> All right, Classroom. We're going to be supporting Apple Classroom here. And essentially, what we're going to do is connect your teachers, students, and classes to their devices. If you are not utilizing an SIS, we will provide you a free Clever license. Uh, but again, at this point, we are supporting Apple Classroom here. Your iOS inventory. That is essentially a dashboard for your iOS devices. All right, so with that, you can customize these columns. So maybe if like UDID isn't uh, you know, a very quick identifier for you, you can actually remove that and put something like, I don't know, auth username or client name. Again, it's a dashboard for your iOS devices so you can customize it to look how you want to. 
If a device has not checked in within 30 days, it will appear red. So clearly we have a problem. <laughs> uh, but with that, if you double click on the device, it will show you the last state the device was in before it stopped checking in, right? So you, you're able to do some investigating if you need to, let you know if it is lost or stolen, all right? But as you just saw, double clicking it will take you to the client info to see the state that that machine is in. And again, iOS inventory is your iOS dashboard. License management, all right? So with license management, again, we're gonna go back to that stoplight color scheme. So green, you're good, you're license compliant. Yellow, hey, you're getting close to that number, so you may wanna take some action. And red, you're definitely out of compliance. All right, now something that I touched on before, your synchronized VPP. All right, so if you are utilizing Apple School Manager and VPP, you can make all your purchases there. And then when you synchronize your VPP, essentially what we're gonna do is see, hey, have you made any new purchases since the last time you synced up with FileWave? If so, we'll ask, hey, do you want us to make the file set? Which again, just saves you some time. You say, yeah, and then now you can just associate that file set directly to the machines that you like. All right, now we also can track more than just the VPP licenses. As you can see with this Firefox here, uh, I'll just double click. When you double click, you can actually see where the application sits or where that license sits rather. And then if I click edit license, so this is just one way of, uh, or excuse me, this is how you would track those licenses that are not natively pulled in, right? So you would just enter in your information. So it doesn't have to be Firefox. It could be Adobe or anything that you're actually paying for. Uh, you just say what you want that expression to be based off. Uh, here we're going the application. When do you want to be warned? So warming when there are two or less. You can actually select the platform type so you can uh, better keep track of it. And then obviously you just have to make sure that the expressions are all true, right? Now, as Stephen pointed out earlier, if it is uh, a real purchase, as I've been saying with Adobe or whatever, you can actually upload your real PO information and track it that way, right? So with this one, I'll show you really quickly. I'm uh, changing that Firefox so we can change that color, right? So I moved it up to five, now it's yellow. If I would have made it uh, 10, it would be green. All right, so that's how you can control your license management. Boosters, again, as Steven so elegant, elegant Whitley said, they are essentially caching servers, all right? So with that being said, if uh, you don't have a super large environment, you may not necessarily need a booster. Uh, they will help with that distribution, but again, you may not necessarily need one. An added bonus of uh, utilizing a booster, though, is that subnet discovery scan. So with that, we will scan your subnet and pick up everything on there. So even if there is something that we cannot currently manage, we can still inventory it, right? So here, this is a Nest thermostat. All right, I'll go ahead and add it to my unmanaged devices because we cannot currently manage a Nest thermostat. And here, these are all the devices, so you can really inventory down to your desk phone, right? Uh, but again, even if we cannot manage it, we can still inventory. And last but not least, the perfect segue, inventory queries, all right? So uh, as you may have noticed, inventory queries within FileWave is very large. Obviously, you know, we use inventory queries for your smart groups, right? So right out of the box, you have all these different queries ready to go for you. And uh, one added bonus that I did want to show again for Chrome is the extended inventory reporting. So here, this is a group less than eight gigabytes of RAM, right? It's still gonna pull in all of the operating system regardless of OS. So there's a Chrome, Android, Mac, Windows on the same inventory query. So again, just extended inventory reporting for Chrome. Just show you some examples, last check-in, off, so on and so forth, all right? Now, um, also, if we have any Hayes software customers, we do have a Hayes sync. So with Hayes, they actually do uh, attach serial numbers and barcodes, but we can sync in with Hayes, and this just goes back to that RESTful API that I first spoke about with our application token. All right, uh, but that in a nutshell is FileWave Admin. So uh, now I guess we'll go to the polls and we'll see if we can answer any questions. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, and like I said, everybody, uh, I know this is a lot of information and it does look like we uh, will be giving you a little bit of your time back. Uh, but there were some good questions there. 
Uh, let me let uh, John's uh, screen unshare and I will go over some of the questions in regards to licensing, how that works, how it's structured. Uh, and there was one about EDU discounts. So uh, to kind of um, plug on that one. And again, John, I'm not sure. It still says John is presenting. I don't know if you want to try to share and unshare again um, just to maybe kick it out. Uh, but we do have dedicated educational pricing. That's obviously very, very key. Um, aside from pricing, um, we, we're all about providing you what you need when you need it, right? We know we're kind of in that uh, budget crunch, that planning. A lot of the planning, I'm sure, is already set in stone for this summer. Uh, but at the same time, we want to enable you uh, to, you know, if this is something that you do need to get into your hands sooner than later, we can definitely make that happen. All right, let me share my screen here real quick. I'll go over one last detail here. All right, let me just play that. All right, so to kind of kind of close things up with what are some uh, next step opportunities? So of course we'd love to join you on a quick discovery call. Um, you know, dependent on you know how how uh, open your your doors are right now. We we obviously are starting to come back on site with districts, which is extremely exciting too. So we can do that discovery call. We can talk about the programs that you have in place, right? How, you know what's working, what's not. I know that's not always easy to discuss. We can definitely do a much more deep dive demonstration, maybe around some of your already work, you know, already pre-built workflows that you're using specific tools for. As I was kind of mentioning before, we can do a cost analysis, talk about, you know, what the systems you have in place, what are the cost structures behind them? Can we obviously not only be more efficient, but more cost effective? And then I was uh, uh, just saying about that guided setup. So you can get FileWave up and running tomorrow if you really wanted to. Uh, it is a full production environment that we get into your hands and uh, allow you to enroll whatever you need, right? Uh, John will be, a, again, your dedicated engineer to kind of help you get up and going and then be there for that support uh, during that testing. Um, again, the, even I know I said testing, but once again, it is a full production environment. And we try to do that on purpose. So if you do choose to go live, you don't have to redo anything that you took the time to do in that test mode. Um, I don't believe I kind of uh, shouted it out, but to make sure I reiterate that FileWave is an all-inclusive platform. I know, again, there's a lot of different tools out there that do a little bit of everything you saw today. FileWave is complete. We do not modularize the product. Uh, you can just manage your Windows or just manage your Apple or just track your Chrome, et cetera, uh, or you can bring them all into one. It's really up to what you have licensed but the functionalities are inclusive, all right? That does go into our unlimited technical support model. As I mentioned, that is US-based, but you don't have to worry about running out or anything like that. Uh, you can call, you can email, you can put in a ticket, schedule appointments, a really flexible team there to make sure you have what you need. And going even beyond that, all of our support agents are actually certified engineers at FileWave. So we try to take that up a notch because again, we know time is limited uh, all the time. Um, ongoing updates are also included as of course, we're always coming out with new things within the platform, already have an action packed release uh, uh, timeframe here this summer. Uh, we just did our newest release 14.2 that had some really nice Okta and Azure uh, updates in it. And again, we're gonna continue to add some additional MDM functionalities on the Windows side, which is equally important. And then I had mentioned some of that uh, uh, screen, additional screencasting as well. We do also offer uh, additional pro services that we can maybe do some custom work for you. Uh, that's where we're bringing that team. And uh, they would also be in charge of uh, be getting your file wave certified if you wanted to take that to all the way through. Now, again, kind of one of the questions was about licensing options. So we do provide two very, very easy to understand licensing models. Just like every other solution out there, we do offer that per device, per year, multi-year option. Just manage what you need. Or you can have a true unlimited district site license. We are the only MDM, multi-OS MDM, that offers this type of license. And that is true, it's unlimited. It is a locked cost for your district and team and you now have the ability to no longer worry about what's coming in, what's going out, who's donating what. You don't have to worry about getting five more MDM licenses for said iPads. Once you're at an unlimited district model, you have that flat cost 
and you have whatever device counts you need, all devices supported. A much more flexible approach to be able to pivot as well as potentially do the devices change. We understand there are a lot of uh, uh, funding options out there. We're very uh, fortunate to be a part of the approved CARES Act 1. Uh, we are a, 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 an approved solution for the ESSER funds, um, and it's been a really great way to kind of future-proof these next you know, couple, three, five plus years that uh, districts are taking advantage of. And of course, with those multi-years, there's additional discounts, but uh, we can always get into that later. Um, but again, kind of reiterating those four bullet points, those are all around just kind of, like, like I said, getting you what you need now, not having to worry about to maybe get started uh, upon that budget cycle. Don't let that uh, deter you from taking a look at FileWave. We want to give you everything we can ahead of the time, not worry about the business side of things, uh, especially when you got, we really want you to vet the product, make sure it's the right fit for you, especially in those larger installations, right? A lot of moving parts, a lot of moving team members, we want to adhere to each of them. We want to hear what they like within their uh, own realm, right? At the end of the day, our goal is to centralize your team's efforts and uh, tool sets. You can go in and you can still be just an Apple uh, uh, admin or Windows admin or inventory tech, right? But at least everyone becomes unified on one platform, all right? So like I said, it looks like we're going to give you a little bit of your time back today, which is always Always great. I hope uh, I hope uh, today has been a, a great, eventful day for everyone. Lots of great sessions and still going on past today. If you do have any questions, we'll be around. But you've got our direct information there at the bottom. Maybe take a screenshot or two. Uh, but like I said, please stop by our booth, grab some quick documents. There is a schedule link in there too. If you want to set up that deep dive uh, demonstration, go ahead and check out our calendar. Uh, go ahead and book a time frame right on there and we'll confirm with you. And if uh, none of those work out, shoot us over an email. We'll definitely uh, take you, take care of it from there as well. All right, once thank again, you, oh, go thank ahead. Thank you, Steve. And John, I don't know if you have just a moment. There's a couple of questions that I think you answered in the chat that probably would be helpful to also answer live. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at there. Sure. One of the questions was just the integration with Paulette Destiny. I know it, you mentioned that it, um, you don't have a connection between, I'm sorry, that you do have it, but it would be a customized um, process. Can you speak to that just a little bit? Like what kind of customizations do you do and how might that how might that work for those of us in the audience that are using Follett and Destiny? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, and the reason I said it was custom, so all of our API injections are custom. And that was, I, I actually meant to say that in a good way because we like to, enable that customization because each of these inventory systems have their own quirks, right? And so each API integration is custom to you, the customer. We would actually start off with a discovery call, find out what attributes you may not be finding in Destiny or what other system you're using and what file we've has. There then we can make those connection points to like um, the device discovery functionality or for device tracking, uh, that's been a big request these months to where they want to inject the latitude, longitude, uh, and maybe IP into the other system. So it uh, doesn't matter if it's Destiny or the other Haze one-to-one -one incident IQ, it's all a custom approach so that we're pulling over exactly what you need as a school. Okay, and we're talking about pulling data out of the other system and bringing it in mm -hmm. to Huawei? And we can do that vice versa. So if there's attributes like um, uh, ticketing comments or things like that, we can actually create that sync into FileWave as well. Okay. And then I think we answered in the chat about the, um, the imaging bare metal machines, but um, it'd be helpful to kind of verbalize that, I think, for folks that may not have caught that in the chat window. Uh, yeah. Okay, that was go a ahead. question. <laughs> okay, yes, ma'am. No. So uh, that question actually came from Jerry Shaver. Hope I didn't mess that up, Jerry. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, sir. So we can st uh, image bare metal machines as well. So essentially what you'll do is you would enter in the uh, MAC address uh, as a placeholder into FileWave, uh, and that would bring in that placeholder MAC address. And then once you image the machine, uh, it'll recognize that it has the client now and your client will appear in that uh, client's pane. So yes, sir, you can image uh, uh, bare metal machines as well. 
Great. Did that get the questions answered? I think there's one more about how long has FileWave been around? And if anybody else has any questions they want to raise their hand, I can put you on stage to ask that question before we wrap this up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I must have missed that one. <laughs> yeah, so FileWave itself has actually been around for just under 30 years. Uh, quick, I, I love telling the story. We actually have our same CEO and founder. She's amazing. Uh, and she loves telling the story about how FileWave was born on the Apple side, believe it or not. We actually came pre-installed on Apple servers back in the day. You got a FileWave handbook. Um, so uh, we love talking about that. But uh, so Apple of all 30 years, and then we quickly adopted the Microsoft side. So about 24, 25 of those years, we've all been on the Microsoft side. And then we continue to add on. We were one of the first MDMs, believe it or not. I know some uh, of some players out there that are Apple only, um, and it can get kind of shadowed. But we were the first to the table with MDM on the iOS, you know, all, all those uh, uh, lovely i devices. And Android, we brought on a full MDM compatibility just a couple of years ago. And then Chrome about four years ago is when we started our partnership with uh, with Google. And that has just uh, been amazing as we're always getting fed new APIs for that Chrome side to, so that we can further enhance the overall GAC experience. Awesome. Thank you. You're very welcome. I did see a question there from uh, Jacob, a two-way communication. Maybe that was about the inventory sync. It is a two-way communication. Uh, or it can be if that's what you're wanting. But if not, please uh, please let me know and I can clarify. Yes, all right, great. <laughs> that common question, common question, very much so. Like the, the data can reside in both places or one or the other. Nice. All right. I don't see anything else popping in here, and I don't see any raised hands. So okay. I feel like we've given them good enough, enough time, and they can come see you in the vendor booth. Will you be there um, during the vendor session? Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Well, we will find you there. Thank you so much for the presentation today. I appreciate it. We all do. All right. Thank you all and then enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All.